Today on Monkey Life. A new rescued capuchin arrives at the park, but can he make friends? We want to get to know his character a little bit better before we pick and choose which capuchins he's going to be introduced to. Mmm, that's nice. Super-sized marmoset Ruby discovers if her new diet plan is paying off. I think it's on the scales. There you go. Good girl. And woolly monkey male Chippy patrols his new home for the first time. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. It smells a bit macaque in there, but yeah, we're good. The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 20 different species. Today, the park has rescued another monkey originating from the UK pet trade. Rescues are a regular occurrence, and having enough space to house them all is a real issue. Today's new arrival is a highly intelligent capuchin monkey. Capuchins come from Central and South America. The park cares for 79 of them. 72 came from a medical research laboratory in Chile, and seven from the UK pet trade. So this is Dino. We've just arrived back at the park, and he's a approximately 20-year-old male capuchin monkey that um, originally was confiscated as part of the pet trade, and from poor circumstances, local police took him to a local zoo and wildlife park who couldn't keep him full term, and were potentially going to put him down, and then found a private owner down the road who was prepared to take him. So Dino's been living as a pet monkey, if you will, um, at a private home in South Wales for the, well, pretty much all of his life, for 18 or more years. Bringing Dino to the park is just the first step. Now the real hard work begins for the primate care team. And they have a plan. Although he's lived with other capuchins in the past, he's been living alone for a while and needs companionship to thrive. Hopefully, we're going to put him with a couple of other males, one of them a male called Winslow, who's been ousted from his group. Winslow is one of the former laboratory monkeys and has been living at the park since 2008. He was a dominant male leading a troop of 17 monkeys, but was recently ousted and badly injured by his own group. He had to be removed for his own safety, and since then, he's been living alone. With Winslow in a room close by, Dino is being given some time to get used to his new surroundings. Although rescued from the pet trade, Dino was one of the lucky monkeys that was kept well. And as he's in good condition for an old boy, the team have high hopes for him. He seems to be settling in quite well, actually. He's very inquisitive, um, so he's wandered around everywhere and checked everything out. He seems quite happy. A little bit nervous because it is a new surrounding and there's lots of new people and there's new sights and new sounds. He's eating well, which is always a very good sign. After some settling in time, Dino's doing so well, the team decide to introduce him to Winslow. This is an important moment for Dino. Winslow's a big male who exudes confidence and he doesn't hesitate going straight in. Dino observes from the comfort of his basket. But he soon heads down to get a closer look at his new roommate. Winslow thoroughly checks out his new surroundings, ignoring Dino for the moment. Then, to give them some extra space, they're given the opportunity to go outdoors. That's another big step, and Dino is tentative.
It's a brave new world out there, and he's a bit apprehensive. But with a chance to get out in the sun, his curiosity gets the better of him, and he can't resist exploring. Within minutes, he gets over his nerves and climbs around confidently. And Winslow seems to be having fun too. Having thoroughly checked out the new area, it's not long before the two boys check each other out. Winslow invites Dino to groom him. It's a great sign, showing he already trusts his new friend. As they relax in the sunshine, the future is looking bright for Dino and Winslow, and the primate care staff hope they will continue to bond. The plan for Dino in the future is not set in stone yet. We're trying to take it slowly and at his pace. He's with Winslow at the moment. We do hope to potentially introduce him to a few more captions um, in the near future. Um, but as of now, we want to get to know his character a little bit better before we pick and choose which captions he's going to be introduced to. It's weigh-in day for two other new pals at the park. Ruby, the largest marmoset, and Oscar, the smallest. Rescued from the pet trade, Ruby's a recent arrival and has been living with Oscar for three weeks. Although tipping opposite ends of the weighing scales, they've been getting along well. Ruby is a triple XL in the marmoset world and on arrival weighed in at a whopping 630 grams. Like all the marmosets at the park, she's now on a healthy eating regime and it's hoped she'll have lost some weight. Can try some? Mmm, that's nice. You can get some on the scales. There you go. Good girl. Good girl, Ruby. 610 grams. Well done. It's a promising start for Ruby, as in just over three weeks, she's lost 20 grams. That's lots for a marmoset. That went really well. This is the, only the second time we've tried to weigh Ruby. Um, the first time she came in, she was in the crate on her on arrival, so we weighed her then. And then I've tried once previously, and she came nowhere near the scales, so this is really good. You heard me click when she was sat on the scales. The clicker acts as a bridge to let them know they're doing the correct behaviour, and then we can give them the food reward afterwards. Good boy, you gonna go down? Good boy. You can do it, be brave. We weigh all our marmosets monthly, um, it's only the first or second of the month, and then if we're worried about anyone, either because they're a bit too high or, or they've lost a bit of weight, then we'll weigh them every two weeks as well. We keep regular checks, and as you can see, they, they fit perfectly onto the scale, so it's pretty easy to weigh them. I'm not looking. Good boy. <laughs> Go cute, you. 260 grams today. Oscar may weigh less than half of Ruby, but the team aren't worried. He's a healthy weight for his small size. Although at opposite ends of the scale, with the nutritious food the team prepare, they should both stay on track. This is just a different way of presenting their food. We could just put it in a bowl every day in their house, um, all chopped up into little marmoset mouse side pieces, but it's just a bit repetitive and boring. So we want to try and give them different methods of, of feeding. Um, and also they have to work harder to get this kind of food. It's on a kebab, so they'll have to climb down and they'll have to take big bites out of it instead of just having a mouse size piece. So it's just something a bit more interesting for them um, and just increase their activity levels really. With the hanging fruit challenge in place, Ruby is first out, quickly followed by Oscar. Ruby calls out to her friend, then heads straight for the kebabs. What is that, Ruby? Whoa. Delicious.
Oscar has also spotted the unusual sticks of fruit, but doesn't seem sure how to make his approach. It'll take some time for them to eat breakfast, but it's a great enrichment activity and a good way for the marmoset to pass the time. And for such a large lady, Ruby shows remarkable agility as she attacks the fruit from above. She actually has settled into the park very well. She was used to um, actually having the whole run of a house, so she's not used to being in, in a cage. And we have nice big enclosures for them, uh, but she's still not used to, to mesh work like this. So we did wonder how she was going to cope with it. But I think actually having a marmoset as a friend far outweighs the garden that she had before, um, and, and companionship is one of the most important things for them. It's an exciting day for the woolly monkeys who live at the park's forest enclosure. Alpha male Chippy recently moved groups, and he's now been introduced to all his new ladies and their children, and has settled him well. Everyone seems quite happy that he's there. Everyone's gone and approached him. There's been lots of snuffling and affection going on between him and the ladies. Um, the kids have been up to him. Lucas, one of the youngsters, has actually been climbing all over him, going on his head. Um, having a bit of a play with him, so all real positive um, interactions so far. Today, the whole group are going outside together for breakfast. It's the first time Chippy will have seen the forest enclosure, and it's very different to what he's been used to with the barn woolies. I'm really excited to see how uh, Chippy's going to cope with this new enclosure. There's lots of natural trees, lots of height to get him up high. I'm hoping he's going to come out here and absolutely love it, do loads of displays and just go around and explore everywhere. Um, obviously, we're giving it a good thorough check to make sure it's all chippy-proof, but I'm hoping um, that he's just going to really enjoy it and we'll all be watching and excited to see how he copes with it. Chippy literally bounces with joy to be outside and quickly tucks into breakfast. There may be a new man about the house, but Piquita is more interested in what's on offer to eat, with little Lucas and the athletic Isla following closely behind Mum. And there's plenty to go round for Zingu and Zavi too. While the two family groups tuck in, like all good alpha males, Chippy uses the time to patrol his new enclosure. His instinct is to protect his new family from any danger. First of all, he inspects the perimeter. The trees look like they can handle the largest woolly in the park. And there's plenty of fun to be had on the ropes and cargo nets. Inspection over, Chippy's happy everything's safe, so it's back to breakfast. Piquita and Lucas have spotted some tasty fresh leaves, and Isla doesn't want to miss out. The youngest member of the group is now three weeks old. The daughter of Zingu and sadly departed Oscar, the team have now given her a name, Olivia. Chippy's been really good with the youngsters in the group. Um, he is used to being around babies and kids. Um, he just lets them know when enough is enough. If he's not in the mood for it, or if he doesn't want them to continue for too long, then he'll just give them a gentle um, telling off, but nothing too severe. The park's smallest woolly, Olivia, and biggest, Chippy, are both doing well in their new family group. And with stomachs full of breakfast, they settle down to enjoy the sunshine. And it's a great opportunity for Olivia to get her own breakfast from Mum. Over at the Bachelor Chimps, there's been a happy transformation. Jester is one of the top-ranking chimps, who traditionally has been grumpy and aggressive. Together with his half-brother, Buxom, they've been a pair of bully boys towards other chimps, and even the primate care team. But that's changed recently, and it seems it might be linked to something that's been bothering Jester. He has a skin condition, which looks a lot like eczema. I don't really know the cause, 
Um, it started quite a few years ago. What we do know is the skin starts to flake um, and becomes quite raw and underneath can be quite bloody and just really uncomfortable skin. Despite many different treatments, the condition wasn't clearing up. So the team decided to start clicker training him to present parts of his body for a new moisturiser. And surprisingly, he's risen to the challenge. He's a very intelligent chimp and he'll pick a behaviour up within sometimes a, a, few, a few sessions. We've had, um, for example, teach him to present his thumbs that only took about 10 minutes. As a result of the training, they're now able to apply medicated moisturiser directly to the sore spots and catch new outbreaks before they get too bad. So it just means rather than having a sore sitting, say, on his shoulder and it being there for a few weeks while we wait for the medication to take care of it, it means we can directly treat it within a few hours of spotting it. Um, and in turn, Jester's much more comfortable as well. Jester will present his thumbs, neck, and even his bottom for treatment. But the added benefit is that as his skin has improved, so has his temper. Jester is probably one of our chimps that up until recently wasn't trained particularly. Um, mainly, he, he had a few key behaviours, but he didn't know very much, and that was mainly because he was known to be a fairly aggressive chimp, particularly towards people. What we've found since we've sort of took him a bit to one side and looked at him a bit closer and um, really started working really closely with him and trying to get more behaviours out of him, we found that he's actually a very intelligent chimp and actually the aggressiveness isn't necessarily that he's aggressive towards people. The more moisturising the team do, the more comfortable and chilled Jester seems to be. He's certainly enjoying the extra attention, and it's possible his painful skin was a contributing factor in his belligerence. It's difficult to say whether how he was behaving before is to do with the fact that maybe he wasn't getting what he wanted from the primate care staff, or whether it was because he was a bit uncomfortable with his skin, um, or whether it's just a case of the training is challenging him that little bit more. We can't really say for for definite, but his behaviour is definitely better. Boy. Although he still needs to work on his manners. The park is home to five different species of gibbons. There's Paul, the agile gibbon. La gibbons, Ella and Kitty. Fox and Nina, the Muller's Gibbons, and Sam and Sasak, the Siamangs. And then there's 13 golden cheeked Gibbons. Gibbons normally pair up with a mate for life. They affirm their bonds and communicate with neighbours using some of the most beautiful sounds in nature. Their songs can travel for up to two miles across the jungle canopy. Golden-cheeked gibbons are found in Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia, and they're endangered in the wild. The park is part of the European breeding programme for this species, and the biggest group here is Peanut's family. And this morning, there's a delicacy awaiting them. The care staff have dotted colourful camellia flowers around for them to find. Gibbons are at home in the treetops, where they find their food. So to mimic natural feeding behaviour, some of the flowers are hoisted up high. They're a rare treat for the gibbons, who spend most of their time eating fruit. There are four members in the family. Mum, Peanut, who's in charge. Dad, Pung Yo, who spends his time guarding the family's territory. And their kids, seven-year-old daughter, Tia Nang, and five-year-old son, Tio. This family group love life in their lofty surroundings. Perfectly at home in the trees, Peanut is a large lady who loves her food. 
she's also a brilliant mum and happy to let son Theo help himself. Although he's reluctant to try the flowers and opts for something he knows, a juicy apple slice. Daughter Tia Nang opts for blooms placed on a lower level. And although she's growing up, she loves hanging out with Mum, so joins her to munch on breakfast. Meanwhile, carefree Tio has plenty of time to play. While Dad Peng Yeo takes his job as family protector very seriously, scanning the horizon and checking out any foreign objects he finds, including the mini cameras filming the family's antics. Tia Nang discovers the elevated feeder, but decides she's had enough flowers for one day. But Peanut, true to form, just can't get enough. While the kids stop for some time out, finally, Peanut settles down to sleep off the feast, and the others head out to play. Next time on Monkey Life, shocking news from Hananya's chimp group. Tico just laid down on the platform. We now know that she had a heart attack. Run! Turn back! And... Tuan's orangs have no problem solving a food puzzle.